Hello everyone, welcome back to today's tutorial. So, last week we did how to use Photoshop to edit pictures to collage and create our own unique landscapes. For today, we're going to focus on landscapes as well, but we're going to use Adobe Illustrator. So, unlike Photoshop, Illustrator uses mostly line shapes and colors to make images. Whereas for Photoshop, you use actual photos and edit them in different ways to make an image. So, I have two examples at the bottom here. Here's one, and here's two. So, this would be the general composition of the drawing that I will be doing. Nighttime sky, moon, land, subject right in the middle. You can either you do an animal or a person, it's up to you. So, let's get started. You'll open Adobe Illustrator and you'll be, you will see this screen right here. Okay, you'll go to create new start a new project and you will see this screen here okay I have a recent because I did this before but if you don't that's okay go to art and illustration and you'll see all these options here so now we will change our measurements from points to inches just to make your level a lot easier <laughs> And we will change our width from 4 to 10, and we'll make our height the same number. So we have a 10 by 10 drawing measured in inches. Orientation doesn't matter because it's a square. Artboard, we only need, we only need one because we're only making one drawing, and we can create it. So now that we're here, your page may not look like this. And if it doesn't, I want you all to go to a window up here at the top, go down to Workspace, and select Essentials Classic. Essentials Classic gives you more tools on the right side. So instead of having to go through each tab at the top to find the tool, the tools are already right here. So, for our first step, we will make our background. So we will go to our toolbar to the left, and underneath this T, you will see a shape. It, it will either be a square, mine is an oval. You, will, if if it's not a square, right click. If it is a square, just click regularly and select the rectangle. So now we have this tool. Go to the top left of your artboard click and drag down to fill the board so now we have this it's a square but it's empty so we go over to the right and we can make this square any color that we want so to, to fill the square you have two options here See how this square is filled in? This has to be on top. That's that's your fill square. And you can pick any color that you want. I will go with a purple. But make it dark because it's going to be a nighttime sky. And then you can go to the one behind it. Script the square behind it. It's called a stroke. We don't want that today, so we're going to go to this box here, the white box with, with the red line. Click on that, and the stroke goes away. Okay? So, to go back to our regular mouse, click on B, click off the square, and now we have our background. And that's, and that's that for the background. So, if you go to the right side, to the very bottom, you see a tab that says Layers. Click on Layers, and next to this little eyeball, Click on that space and lock the layer. Now that the layer is locked, you cannot accidentally move the square. 
while you're working. Next step is to make our, make our clouds or our sky. So you go to the bottom right of the screen, you see a box with a, a plus sign in the middle. That's for making a new layer. Click on that, make layer 2, and we go back to our toolbar to the left. Right click on the shape tool, open up the lips tool, and now we're going to use circles to make clouds. To make a perfect circle, hold down the shift key while you drag out your circle and it stays a perfect circle. Alright, so before we, we, we make more, click back on V, click on your circle, and then, make, and then fill the circle with white. Okay, and make sure there is no stroke around the circle. So now we have a white circle. Okay, to make more, instead of drawing more, you can just copy and paste Command C, Command V, Command C, Command V, Command C, Command V. I make three of them, four of them. So now we have four different circles. All right, and we can you can overlap them any way you want. All right, so now. We have this. We're gonna make some more. So Command V one more time. We're gonna make this one a different size. So Shift key down, make this one smaller. And then we can copy and paste a smaller circle all around. We're gonna want to make this cloud very wide it just looks better in the piece when you make it wide instead of making it tall all right now that we have this what we have to do now is to make all these circles into one shape into our cloud shape so to, to do that highlight over all the circles until we get that, okay? And then you go to the top, press object, and group. So now our circles are all one piece. You can move them together as a unit. So now that we have this, we'll have to copy and paste this whole group and make three clouds, okay? Now we have three. Now that we're here, we're going to have to make these three clouds three different colors. And have the colors match the palette of your background. Or make them be a nag of colors of your background. So, for this top one, I'm going to make it blue. But I want it to be kind of dark, so I'll make it a little bit darker. Yeah, I like that. Next one, I'll make it a lighter purple. And for this last one, I'll make it... For the last one at the bottom here, I made it pink, but I want to make it gray. So an easy way to do that, go to your colors tab, click on these three lines to the right, and choose CMYK. CMYK are the primary colors of digital artwork. So it's cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is black. If you want a color to look more gray, you can adjust the K to change it up a little bit. So I made it more of a grayish purple, and now I have this. So, now you have to make these three clouds different op opacities. The opacity of a object is how solid the object is. So if you can see how you can't see through these clouds, you can't see the purple through these, these clouds. To make it transparent, you can click one, actually click the lightest one. So my, li my lightest one is the gray. Go to transparency. Let's make the gray one 
ten percent. And enter. You can barely see it. Let's make the blue thirty percent. And then we can make the pink fifty percent. So now that we have these three, we're going to layer them. So select the most transparent one, put it right in the middle. We can take the second one, put it over that, but not totally covering it, like off to the side just a little bit. Then we take the third one and place that one there too. Move them around until you find something that you really like. So I'll move this one back up, I'll move this one down. If you end up doing this by accident, you can press Command Z to undo it. Command Z is undo, you can fix almost all your mistakes by pressing the Command Z. Move these around a little bit until you get something that you like. I like this, so I'll keep this. Okay, now that we have our clouds done, what we're gonna do is go back to our ellipse tool and make a circle. Make it pretty big. Back, because we put the circle right in the middle. Okay, now we're gonna go over to the right and press gradient. Gradient is fading from light to dark or dark to light. So next to type, you have three types. Click the middle one, that's the radial gradient. Okay? And now you see this slider at the bottom. Click on the diamond right right in the middle and slide it down towards the black side. Not all the way, but it's, it's nearly hitting the black side. Alright, now that we have this, you see how the circle is mostly white with a little hint of black and gray on the edges. We're going to go back to the gradient tab, double click on black, and you'll get a window kind of like this. I need you to go to the, the three lines at the top right, click on that, Open CMYK. We're going to move all the sliders over to 100%. So, click on Cyan, move it over. Magenta, move it over. Yellow, move it over. So everything is on 100%. This makes it the purest black that you can get. Click off that. What we're going to do now is go to Edit and Cut. I know it's it's gone. Don't worry. We're gonna go back and use that circle layer. So now that we have that, we're gonna open up layers, and to the right of layer two, there's a blank circle. Click on it to target all of the components of layer two. So now that we selected this, we're gonna go to transparency. Okay, and you see this box next to our clouds over here. We're gonna click twice on that. All right, and we have a, a, a layer mask. So now that we have this, we're gonna go to edit, paste in front to make a peephole in the mask. We paste in front and we get the peephole. But if you look carefully, you can see that there is a darkness or a shadow around the edge of the people. This is the circle that we just made. We're gonna put this back in the middle. First one in the middle. And then we have our people. Alright? So now that we made that, we're gonna go back to the right to the transparency tab and click back on our clouds. So we're back to our regular layers. 
and click off of that and now we're going to make our stars to make these stars we go to our shape tool all right and click anywhere on your drawing you will see these measurements come up we're going to change these to 0 0.08 inches Okay, so 0 0.08, 0 0.08, all right, press OK. Now you got to make sure that this very tiny circle is white and get rid of the stroke. So we're here, and we have our little, our little tiny circle. So we're going to go over to the right, click on brushes. At the bottom of the brushes tab, you will see another box with a plus in it. Click, click on that to make to make a new brush. You click on scatter brush. And press OK. So now that we're here, you will see your scatter brush options. You can name it whatever you you want. I'll leave it as scatter brush one. You can name it stars, circles, white stars, whatever you want to name it. Right now, we're going to focus on these menus right here, the first three. Next to size, we're going to change it to random. We're going to change spacing to random and scatter to random. We're going to leave rotation alone. Do not touch rotation. But for size, we have it at random. We're going to set the minimum to 10%. And we're going to leave the maximum at 100. So for the size of the stars, some of them might be very small. Some of them might be as big as the dot that we made earlier. For spacing, we're going to change the 100 to 200. And change the maximum to 1200. Same thing for, for scatter. Make it 200. For the minimum, 1200 for the maximum. And we press OK. So now we can get rid of the circle that we made. And then go to our brush tool. Our brush tool is over to the left next to the shape tool. Click on that. Then go to the right. And click on the brush that we just made. Now, we're going to just scribble the top of the top of, of the artboard. Okay, so, and just scribble around. Let go, and you have some of your stars here. Click on B to get our mouse back, and you can move them around, up or down. If you want more, you can just copy and paste them. All right, and spread them around as much as, much as, as you want. All right, so we have this. It's like a little snow globe. What we're going to do now is click on the stars that you made, go back to transparency, and where it says normal, click on it and pick overlay. And you do that for all the stars that you made. So if you copy and paste it twice and you have three groups of stars, do that for each group. And there we go. I have the stars that I want. So now what we're going to do is go to layers, lock layer two, and then make a third layer. Now that we're here, we're going to go back to our shape tool, right click, and select polygon all right click anywhere on your artboard and bring the sizes down the sides should i say size down to three click ok we have a triangle make this a little bit bigger so we can see the whole triangle so now we're going to go up to the top of our left toolbar and we have two cursors here. The empty one is your regular mouse. The one that's filled in is called your direct selection tool. Click on that. 
You see how the triangle changed? That we have three dots in each corner. Click on one of the dots and bring it down towards the center. Not too much, though, just a little bit. And now we have a curved triangle. Back to our regular mouse, and we can make it the width of the artboard. All right, edge, 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 edge. So now that we have this, we're gonna fill it. All right, so see how there's no color? To fill it, you can use this eyedropper right over here to your left. Click on that, click your background. And now your triangle matches your background. Bring it down towards the bottom of the circle, and then we have a hill. And this would be where your subjects will be standing at the end. Now we have our hill. We're gonna move on to the next object that we have to add. We're gonna add like a glow around at the top of our hill. To do that, Back to our shape tool, right click, click on ellipse, and make a flat oval. Personally, I'm going to change this to a different color so I can see it. Alright, go back to our regular mouse, and we have our ellipse. Bring it down to the top of your hill. I might, I might make mine a little bit smaller. So I can get it up higher. Yeah, that's much better. So now we have this. What we're going to do now is select it, go to Effect at the top of the screen, go down to Stylize, and go to the right and click Outer Glow. So now we're at the Outer Glow. Next to where it says Screen, there's a little box. Click on that box and change the color of the glow. But make it so it matches the palette of your drawing, same as last time. So we click on it, my lavender. You can bring the opacity up to 80. And then you can bring the blur up to I'll do 0.5. I like that. So you can press OK. And then we have a glowing oval. Now, if you go to your layers at the bottom right, click open them up using this little arrow. And you see how there's ellipse and polygon. Click on ellipse and bring it down below polygon. So now our oval is behind our hill, but the glow is still visible. Cool, right? So now what we're going to do is make a moon. So we go back to our shape tool and make a circle. All right, make the circle white with no with no stroke. All right, move the circle right to the middle of the people. Okay. Now what we're going to do is copy and paste this moon to make four different moons. We're going to copy and paste the moon to make four different moons. So copy and paste. Here's one. Here's two. Here's three. So now we have four different moons. We're going to edit each of these moons. So. You take one and change the transparency. So we click on transparency. We'll make this one eight percent. Okay. Click another one. Make that one thirty. Make the next one fifty. Whoops. Make the next one fifty. All right.
Okay. So now we want to layer them with the, the most transparent one being in the back. So let's move this one out of the way. Move this one right where the last one was. Okay. We'll make this one bigger. So shift key and enlarge it. And put it right back in the middle. So we have one. Next one. We'll make this one a little, just a little bit, a little bit bigger. Put it in the middle. Third one, just a little bit bigger. Put that one, back, put that one in the middle too. And then the last one. So the moon is glowing. So now we have this. We're going to go to layers. Open up layer three. We're going to lock the polygon and the glowing ellipse. All right. Then we're going to group our moons. All right. You can use Command G to group, and then we go to our layers and move the group below the polygon and the ellipse, so it looks like the moons in the background. You want to make it bigger? Select it and make, and make it bigger. I like that. So now we have this. All right. We lock all of layer three, and then we have one more step until we're almost done. So right now, we should save our work. All right. Save as, I'll call it purple glowing night. Let's save it to my downloads folder. Save, okay, and here we go. So now we're gonna open up a new artboard. By doing that, select Command N for new. And make an artboard of any size. Now that we're here, I have an image already ready for uh, for myself. For you guys, you can look up or Google an image of a person or an animal and save it. But the background has to be totally white. Okay. We drag it to the new artboard. I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing. Just Command Plus. Alright, so we'll have, well, we have this. Alright, it's a man and a woman hugging. We'll go to Window, go down to Image Trace, and you'll get this. First things first, click Preview. Alright, go to threshold and move it up until there's no more white visible in the figures. So make them into complete silhouettes. Too far. Almost. That's good for me. And then you go to advanced. Click on ignore white. All right. And then you undo preview and click trace. All right. The image is now traced. Before we can copy and paste it, go to object and click expand. All right, yes to object, yes to fill, and click OK. Then we can copy it, Command C, and now that we're back to our original drawing, open up the toolbar to the right and make another layer, a layer four, 
and now you can copy and paste the silhouette onto your drawing. Resize though they're in perspective. I'll make mine even smaller. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. You zoom in. Here's our silhouette. All right. So now the silhouette is black, but I want them to be the same purple as the hill. So we're gonna select them. Use our eyedropper to change the color of them. Click on the hill, and now they're purple. You can move them around any way you would like. But when you zoom out, there they are. A couple on top of the mountain. In your case, it may be an animal standing in front of the moon during a nighttime scene. So that's it. Okay, so as everyone's working on their own projects, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please ask me.